Hello there. Um, in this video I'm going to show you how you can make this personalised spiral bracelet um, with your name wrapped around it. Now this bracelet's actually got the name Susan wrapped around it, um, but obviously you can add your name. Um, so um, if we start the uh, application Fluid Designer for 3D printing, um, I'm going to use the uh, alphabet snap fonts to write the name. Um, so I'm going to spell out the name Susan. So if I just drag and drop the uh, S onto the workspace, and um, I'm just uh, scrolling the center mouse button there to zoom back, and I'll just switch on screencast key. So any key presses I make should be displayed here. So you can see what the S looks like at the moment. Um, it's got a cross section of one millimeter by two millimeters, which is probably going to be okay. Um, if we 3D print this, but you can, because these are parametric smart objects, you can change the thickness of the uh, objects here. Uh, but I'm going to set it back to uh, one by two, and just uh, so you can see it's a curve as well. This object. Um, so if I view it from the top, if I just move that out to the left, now I want to spell out the rest of the name Susan, and we do that by going to File and Append. Now we're already in the snap fonts folder, uh, we're in, in S at the moment, but I want to use. So if you just go up through the menu system, and uh, I'm going to use the capital letter U, so it's snap font U, and we always append the objects, so it's snap font U, append it from the library, and then I can just reposition it wherever I want. So you can have what overlap you, you like. Um, now S I want to duplicate that, so I can just go to Tools, Object Tools, duplicate and press the enter key and then I'll just move the second S over to the right there. Um, now I need an A so uh, file and append again up through the menu system I want snap font A and uh, I need to append from the library the object and again I just move that across and I'll just move it down so the top and bottom are all in line uh, and then file and append up through the menu system and I want an end this time to finish off the word Susan so snap font end append it from the library uh, just move it to the right there um, probably don't need to move to, to, to adjust that right now what I want to do now is to join all these separate objects together so if we look in the outline the panel we've got a n s twice and then we've got a u if I just hold down the shift key on the keyboard and click on all five objects, go to tools, object tools and join them together, you'll see we're left with one object here which is snap font test, that's the last one that I selected. Um, so they're all joined together. Now this is kind of the uh, center point of the object at the moment, whereas it should be over here. So I'm just going to go to tools, object tools, set the origin to the geometry of the shape, so that moves to there. And if I just go to cursor and snap selection, this is what's selected at the moment. Snap it to the cursor, that moves it to the cursor at the center of the screen. So that just centers my object in the middle of the screen there. And as you can see, it's still one by two thick. And uh, if I wanted, I could actually change that cross section because these are parametric objects. So I could change it, make it thicker if you want a, a deeper bracelet. Um, you could do that. I'm going to set it back to one by two again. Um, so if I just go to view and top view now, um, now I want to put an outline around this and I'm going to do that by um, going to uh, add curve and I'm going to use a NURBS circle. Um, this is also a curved object and if I just open up the toolbox panel here by clicking on the plus there um, you can see what the radius of this nerve circle is. So if I just uh, drag the mouse to the right, I can increase the radius and that will increase the circle. And uh, I want it so that it's just going to sit above and below my text. So I'm going to leave it at about that I'm, and then I'll probably adjust the text. Um, so I want to close that uh, toolbox panel now. Um, now I need to widen this so if I press the uh, tab key on the keyboard and um, well first of all I'm going to uh, 
square it off at the moment this is round and what we've got is one two three four five six seven eight control points if i just press the a key on the keyboard and press a again that will select all of those control points could have done it from the menu um, and then if i uh, click the right mouse button i can subdivide those control points so i'll get additional control points and the thing about that so these are the additional control points that have just been created but it also uh, squares off my object so if i press a on the keyboard again and a to select all what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press uh, S on the keyboard for scale and I want to scale it just in the X direction and so I'm just going to pull it out until it's just around the outside of the object now I know it's not quite that on the right hand side I'll just go a little bit more yeah um, but I mean I can move this box I can just move it one section to the right just like that until it uh, is around Susan now if I press the tab key to come out of uh, edit mode now whenever you scale curves in fluid designer you always need to do control A and apply the scale otherwise you could have problems printing um, now our curve around the outside here our nerb circle um, has got no depth to it well we could add the depth over here okay or if we want and this is the better way to do it if I hold down the shift key the curve selected at the moment hold down the shift key and click on Susan make sure Susan's the last object that you select not the first if I go to tools object tools and join my curve around the outside now and Susan it's all one object um, so if I just view that sorry view it from the top um, so I can see what that looks like at the moment now now there's a little bit sticking out here so if I just scroll in using the center mouse button and if I press the tab key on the keyboard um, and if I just select those two control points and if I just move them down you can see I move them inside the border there so I'm just repositioning a few control points just to make it fit better and again move there now I think I'll switch off the snap here because you do need you do need some interference between the uh, object in the middle and the border around the outside otherwise um, when it prints uh, the center will fall out so do sort of pull some of these points in here um, you don't want, necessarily want them sticking out the other side uh, but you do want them some overlap so I'm going to I'm going to adjust the Susan slightly here just pull that up so you get some overlap um, now obviously this does change the appearance of Susan a little bit but uh, not too much uh, and uh, I'll probably just pull that point up there now you can spend as much time as you want doing this um, important thing is not to have things sticking out on the outside though um, if you want to see how far it is into the object, you could always go into uh, wireframe mode. Oh no, you can't. It doesn't show it in this case because it's all one object. Forget about that. Um, okay, so once you've adjusted those points, we've got Susan on the inside now. Um, what we want to do now is we want to wrap it around a spiral curve. So I'm going to need to open the toolbox again. And I'm going to add a curve object and I'm going to add a spiral curve and uh, if I just zoom in on that there you can see the spiral curve there now it's only um, got a radius of one millimeter so that's really quite small um, I'm going to assume here that I'm going to try and create a bracelet with an inner diameter of about 65 millimeters so I need to increase this radius. Now I'm going to increase it to about 35. So in other words, the uh, inner diameter of this object will be about 70 millimeters. Because because this is a, a spiral, um, our object is not going to be exactly round. But we, we can adjust it a little bit later. Now if you uh, look at that, you can see it's a little bit uh, not rounded. Because it's made up of 24 steps. 
Um, we're not going to print this um, spiral curve here, so I'm going to click in here and I'm going to type 360, as in 360 degrees in the circle, and that just rounds off my spiral curve there. Now I've got no offset for this curve, I've got no height to it, so if we change this value here you'll see that the curve moves up, uh, and I'm going to initially set it at 10, and I'm going to adjust it later. Okay, so there's our curve, um, our spiral curve that we're going to wrap the Susan around. Now, we obviously need to rotate Susan around the x-axis 90 degrees if we're going to wrap it around this curve. And we can do that by doing R on the keyboard for rotate, X on the keyboard to limit the rotation to the x-axis, and then 90 degrees. So we've just rotated Susan about 90 degrees. That's the bracelet itself. And we can see that in the uh, properties panel over here. Now what we want to do is to wrap Susan around this um, spiral curve. And we do that using a modifier. And the modifier that we need is a curve modifier. So we've got Susan highlighted, the uh, bracelet itself. And we're going to wrap it around a curve. And the object that we want to wrap it around, it's not these cross sections, it's the um, curve, so it's the spiral curve. So I've scrolled right down to the bottom, and if I select spiral, you can see Susan starts to wrap around the spiral there. Now if we look at it from above, you can see perhaps half of, half of it has been wrapped around the spiral. Um, so um, what do we need to do? Well, if we go to view and front view, and if we press the tab key on the keyboard, you'll see that half of the name Susan, half of the bracelet, is to the left of the blue line, the blue line being the y-axis. So if I press the A key on the keyboard and press A again until all the control points are selected, so all that object is selected, if I just move it to the right until the left-hand part of the uh, bracelet is in line with the y-axis and then if I press the tab key you can see now all of my uh, bracelet is wrapped around that part of the uh, spiral. Now clearly it's not going all the way around so what I want to do is I want to stretch it out. So again if I go to view and front view if I press the tab key on the keyboard now all the control points are highlighted at the moment so what I want to do is I want to scale it in this direction only. So if I press S on the keyboard and uh, X and then if I just pull it out now uh, and click and uh, press the tab key to return from, from edit mode to normal mode. Now whenever you scale in Fluid Designer always make sure you do Control A and apply the scale straight away. Now you can see that this isn't quite wrapped around properly again. We've got a bit sticking out on this side. So again, if we just go to view and front view, press the tab key on the keyboard. So here's our Y axis, the blue line. So we just uh, just need to move our object until the left hand side of the object is by the blue line, the Y axis, and just press tab key again. And there we are. Now we could uh, stretch it a little bit more um, so if I just go to view in front, press the tab key on the keyboard, and uh, I want to press S to scale, X to limit the scale to the X axis, and I'll just pull it out a little bit more, and click, and press the tab key to return to normal mode, and again remember to do control A and apply the scale, um, and so there we are. Now as you can see we've um, yeah, we're, we're pretty much there. We've got this straight bit here, and that's again because of the y-axis uh, issue. So if I just go to view and front, uh, hold on the uh, keyboard there um, to center it, and just press tab. So I just want to move it again. I just have to zoom out here. Just move it again to the right until the left-hand part of the object is in line with the y-axis, and then press tab key. Okay, so there we are. Um, now, we could leave this with the object being overlapped like that. 
or if I want I could adjust this and make a, a gap here so if I press if I click on the spiral itself and go to view and front and go into edit mode by pressing the tab key on the keyboard and if I select all of this object now the spiral I'm working on here by pressing the A key that will highlight all of it and if I scale this in the Z direction so if I press S on the keyboard to scale and Z to limit the uh, scaling to the Z axis I can open up my bracelet look so I'll just open it until it is just slightly open there so it's not touching so that's, uh, that's opened up the bracelet there. Now, the only thing that we really need to do now is... Um, I'll just come out of edit mode for a second. We just now need to check the inner diameter of the object is going to be okay to fit onto our wrist. So if I go to view and top view... Um, now, you could try measuring it with the ruler, um, but it's not exactly round, this, so that's what... Uh, that's that's actually not too bad there that's 63.7 millimeters um, press escape to cancel that I could measure it across here now we may find that it's slightly different dimensions yeah so it's a little bit there so 61 so if I wanted to scale this up a little bit um, what I could do is if I do add mesh and cylinder and uh, if you know that you want an inner diameter of 65 millimeters, if we type 65 and 65, there's a, a, a cylinder now with a diameter of 65 millimeters, which is, I'm, I'm assuming that that's your wrist diameter. Um, what we can now do is if we click on the spiral, not on the uh, bracelet itself, click on the spiral and uh, just move this back a bit and if I press the tab key to go into edit mode now notice all of it's selected at the moment so it's A on the keyboard to select it if I do S on the keyboard for scale I can pull out my spiral and as I do that my bracelet will open up now you do need to take into account that this is not perfectly centered here when you scale it like that um, and uh, if I just click on the um, cylinder there and uh, if I just press the G key on the keyboard to grab it to move it in any direction you can see I can reposition that and we can see that it's more or less such that uh, we have got a circle 65 millimeters diameter in the middle of that um, I could change the Z height here. If I, if I type in 60, that'll give me some Z height. So, yeah, I think that's okay now. Now, we don't need this cylinder, so I can, with the cylinder highlighted, I can press X on the keyboard and delete it. Um, um, we've got our bracelet there. Now, if we decided we did want to change the thickness of this at this stage from 2 millimeters thick, we could do... We could go into cross section and I could change it to say four millimeters thick but that will change the inner diameter there you may need to reset that I'm going to leave it as one by two um, so there is my spiral personalized bracelet with the name Susan wrapped around it that's how you can create it in fluid designer um, now what you do need to do is to go to file and export this either as an SDL file or so as wavefront object file and um, what you must always do then is once you've actually exported that uh, in a su suitable file format either OBJ or uh, STL you must always go to Netfab Basic and run it through Netfab Basic uh, and uh, to just uh, repair any slight holes or edge problems which we usually get with fluid design but essentially that's uh, that's the process that you need to go through to create your own personalized bracelet similar to the one shown here okay so that's it thank you very much